we give you praise. You are worthy to receive our praise, glory, and honor. Lord, we worship you. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the authority that we have in you. We thank you because, Lord, you are our creator, you are our God. Father, we exalt your holy name, O Father. Blessed be thy holy name, everlasting King of glory. We commit today's faith clinic in your hands, everlasting Father. Every word that shall be spoken before thee this afternoon, this evening, Lord, we pray that let it go forth with authority and power. Let it speak into the lives of the children, O Lord, to the glory of your name. Blessed be thy holy name, Heavenly Father. You are worthy to receive all praise. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We give God the glory for today. We thank him even for the word that we have for you. We are going to speak on the topic, you can dominate what dominates you. You can dominate what dominates you. You know, as children of God, even as a creation of God upon this earth, there are things which would try to suppress us, things which would try to dominate over our lives. But I want to tell you, I've got a good news for you today, to let you know that you can actually dominate over those things that dominate you. Our scripture text today, we'll take it from the book of Genesis chapter 1. I'll read from verse 26 to 28. Genesis 1 from verse 26 to 28. And the Bible reads, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him, and male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You know, a thought came into the mind of God. He conferred with God the Son and the Holy Spirit and said, Now, let us create man in our image. And one thing you see there, after he says, Let us create man in our image and in our likeness, he says, And let them have dominion, dominion over every other thing, as you read the scripture down there. And then he goes on in verse 28, after creating man. He blessed man. He blessed man. He made him fruitful. He made it possible for him to multiply. And he said, let him fill the whole earth and subdue it. And he further said, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and every fowl of the air and every other living thing that moveth upon the earth. Therefore, Actually, you are not meant to be dominated as a creation of God. You are meant to dominate over other things. But when you are being dominated, which means you are not living according to the fulfillment of the will of God concerning your life. Now, what does it mean to be in dominion? To be in dominion is to be in a position of control and authority over others. When you're in control and have authority over every other thing, then it means that you are in dominion. You are not being dominated. Meaning that all other things become subject to you and they begin to answer to you. They become subject to you and begin to answer to you. Many of us believers today, many of us Christians today, our world is falling apart because we have refused to exercise the dominion power that the Lord our God gave unto us. The dominion power that we carry in us, we have refused 
to exercise it. And therefore, we find that we are being dominated by many other things in our lives. From the beginning of creation, God's intention was for you and me to be in dominion and never to be dominated. However, we lost control of our position of dominion when Adam and Eve disobeyed God. And this led to the extent that other forces, other things began to dominate in our lives. Sickness began to dominate in our lives. The flesh began to dominate in our lives. Ah, the devil took control of dominion over the life of every Christian child. He began to toss us around here and there. But however, I'm here to tell you that you can overcome and have dominion. You must know that what dominates over you and begin to work, you can, what dominates over you is not there permanently. You can begin to work towards changing the situation into your favor. You can have victory and take your position of domination and you begin to dominate in that which dominates over you so to start with you may say I, <laughs> me i don't see myself being dominated but there are many different ways of which you may need to be dominated in our lives i'll just mention a few today the first on my list is that the flesh can dominate you the flesh can dominate you. If you read Romans 12 to 13, Romans chapter 8, verse 12 to 13, the Bible reads, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh. We are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. I'll read it again. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh. Which means that we have got no obligations at all towards the flesh. Such that we begin to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if we live, if we, through the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, we shall live. The scripture, as you can see, it is two-sided. Is reminding us that we are not to live after the flesh. We have got no obligations to live after the flesh. Because if we live after the flesh, then death is our portion. Then we shall be dominated by the things of the flesh. But however, if we multiply the deeds of the flesh, if we put to death, we kill the deeds of the flesh, we control the deeds of the flesh, then... <laughs> we shall live. And this we can do through the help of the Holy Spirit. Through the help of the Spirit. Now when we allow the flesh to dominate us, our life shall be that of a sinful nature. Because of the carnality of the flesh. When we allow the flesh to control us, to dominate us, our lives become the lives of sin. It becomes a life of a sinful nature because of the carnality of the flesh. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to 8 reads, For they that are, after, that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, 
for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now to get back to verse 5, he says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Which means that if you concentrate on the flesh, if you allow the flesh to take over, your mind, your deeds, your actions, your way of life will be after the things of the flesh. But if you allow the spirit, then the issue will be different. Now, brethren, I want to remind you that as children of God, you are not expected to live after the flesh. The flesh itself has certain things of which it, it, it controls you to do. There are certain things it directs you to do. When you live after the flesh, a sinful life, dominating pattern becomes your lifestyle. Such as lying, things like lying become a, part of, become a part of your life. Stealing, fornication, adultery, greed, and the likes, they become a portion of your life. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. The Bible reads, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, Last viciousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You find that in all these things, the flesh dominates in your life. The flesh controls your lifestyle. So the flesh is one of those things which can dominate us and removes us from the position of control and authority which we ought to have as children of God. So when the flesh dominates over your life, you will fail to walk close to the Lord by faith and by means of the principles of his word and by the spirit. Which means all those things which can help you in your work as a Christian child are suppressed, are put under by virtue of the fleshly deeds. Your faith is killed. What the word says about your, your life, what God says about you, having dominion, having authority and control, that also is taken away. And the authority of the spirit over your life is not there because you are living according to the flesh. Galatians 5.17 says, For the flesh lasteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do these th the things that you would do. So if the flesh is dominating in your life, you have not made God your priority. And here Galatians 5.17 is saying that the flesh fights against the spirit. And the spirit is fighting against the flesh. But if you allow the flesh to dominate, which means you are being dominated. You are not who God expects you to be as his child. The number two things I have listed as a thing which would dominate your life is fear. Fear dominates in your life. It dominates in the lives of many such that they are not able to stand in their God-given authority. Fear places people under bondage when you are always fearful that you should know, then 
you are under bondage. If you are always fearful, know that you are under bondage. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. I want us to read it together. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. It says, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But what have you received? But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit which we have is that of the Father. That we see God as our Father, as our Creator. We see Him who has placed us in the place of dominion as the one who is guiding and directing our lives. Such that fear does not come in and you are not in bondage at all. So when you have the Spirit of God and you call out to God and that is your Father, then you are not under bondage. But if you allow fear to come in and take in the position of you being the child of God, then you are under bondage. The scripture here says it clearly. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Hebrews 2, 14 to 15, it says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So when we live to bond under bondage, you are subject to that which puts us under bondage. You are a servant to whom you control, who, to the person who controls your life. If the devil is controlling you through fear, then you are under bondage to the devil. But glory be to God. Christ came to change that situation. That he may take the power of death away. That's the devil. And deliver you and me from the control of which the devil has over us through fear. And through fear, the devil keeps us under bondage. So the devil uses fear to keep us under bondage, to remain in bondage. So that we do not dominate in any area of our lives. Because if we live in fear, there's nothing we can do. We will always be afraid to start something. We will always be afraid to pray. We will always be afraid to command and take our position of authority. Because we are fearful. Fear makes sure that we do nothing about our condition and position. And I pray that shall not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be a person who will live in authority and dominion over all things. I want to thank the Lord our God because he has not given us a spirit of fear. If you read 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7, it says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. By reason of his spirit, God has not given us a spirit of fear. But by reason of his spirit, <laughs> he has given us power. He has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Meaning that we are in control. We are right in our position of authority whereby we are in charge of the things which are before us. We dominate in every area of our lives. 
and we are not being dominated. You should know that the power of God is in you. Because God has not given you a spirit of fear, but that of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Therefore, you should not be afraid. Do not allow fear to put you under bondage. Because when you allow fear to be a part of your life, then you allow yourself to be dominated by the things of which fear brings in your life. Because there's no way you will progress. There's no way you will go forward if you're always a fearful person. I pray that the spirit of God, that of power, of love, and the son man will stand in the fore in your life to the glory of God. Now, the third thing I want to mention to you today, which will cause you to be dominated, is lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What you don't know, you've got no control over it. <laughs> but what you know, you can use it to your advantage. What you know can help you to make informed and correct decisions. But if you don't know anything, there's no way you can make a decision to choose what is right or what is good, what is wrong and what is correct. Because you don't have any knowledge of anything. Without knowledge, you cannot understand your position. You cannot understand your situation fully. You cannot understand or even know the solution which you have before you to sort out your problem in your situation. Because you lack knowledge. You will not know your position of authority because you lack knowledge. When you lack knowledge, you do not know or understand even the weapons of your warfare. What weapon am I going to use in this situation? Because if you don't know anything, you will just be under domination. You will be dominated over. You will be people, other things will dominate, you have dominion over you. Other people will have dominion over you because you lack knowledge. There can be things which belong to you, but other people will be enjoying them because you don't know whether they are yours or you don't know how to retrieve them back to yourself. Because you lack knowledge, other people will rule over you. They have control over you. Knowledge helps you to grow. Knowledge helps you to walk in your place of dominion. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 to 21 says, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Knowledge. Knowledge puts you in a position of authority. It places you where you understand things. You see them beforehand, firsthand, and are able to do the right thing to overcome. When you have knowledge, you remove yourself from a position of being dominated to a position of dominating, which means those things which were dominating you before, because you now have the knowledge required, you will begin to dominate over them. With knowledge, you have at your disposal the authority 
and power required to dominate over everything in this world. Which takes me to the fourth thing which can dominate you, which is lack of growth. Remember I said without knowledge, you cannot grow. If you don't grow, then you cannot place yourself in the place of authority above those things which are dominating over you. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. Before I read the scripture, I just want to say this to you. You cannot outgrow the knowledge which you have. If you don't have the knowledge, you will remain at that same position always. What you don't know cannot improve anything in your life, cannot add to your life. But what you know will improve in your life. It will add in your life. Therefore, knowledge will help you to grow. So if you cannot grow, listen to Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. It says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant. Though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. A child remains a child until he becomes of age, both in stature, growing in stature, as well as growing in knowledge. That's why you find that most of the elders will tell you, what do you know? You don't know what we know. You've not seen what we have seen. You've not passed through what we have passed through. Because of your age, because you are still a child. They will begin to tell you to say, experience is the best teacher. You don't understand anything. Let us be in control because we know more than you know. But I want to tell you this today. Strive to grow. Strive to gather knowledge. Strive to grow. Because if you don't grow, you will remain a child. When you refuse to grow, you remain as a child. And what you ought to have control of shall be and shall continue to be under the control of others. You must grow in your Christian work if you want to dominate over the things that dominate you. That is very principal and very cardinal. If you cannot grow in your Christian walk as a child of God, all other things in this world will have dominion over you. They will begin to influence your life in every way because you have refused to grow. As a child, you remain under the command and authority of others. Those things that have authority over you shall dominate over your life. They will continue to dominate over your life. But when you grow, you become rooted in Christ. As a child of God, as a Christian, when you grow in Christianity, you become rooted in Christ. Colossians chapter 1 verse 7. Colossians chapter 1 verse 7. The Bible reads, rooted and built up in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. When you grow in knowledge, when you grow in faith, you will become rooted and built up in Christ Jesus, who is the owner of everything, who is the authority on all knowledge, who is the authority on all faith. Who is the commander-in-chief of the Lord of Lords? You become built up in him. Because you have the knowledge which Christ has, you begin to dominate. You begin to rule over. You begin to control. And my prayer is that the Lord will help you to dominate and to be in charge in Jesus' name. Having spoken about a few things which would dominate in your life, (laughs) 
What then do you need to do? What next for you? Who's being dominated? Isaiah 49 verse 24 says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? Those things which are dominating over your life, can you be removed under their clutches? Can you come out from under their authority? Some of them lawfully, they have authority over you. They have the right to dominate over you. But is it possible that you can come out from under their authority? Yes, you can. Yes, there is a way out. Isaiah 49 verse 25 says, But thus says the Lord, If in the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, meaning those authorities which are trying to dominate you, you can be taken away from their hands. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered, for I will contend with them that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. So what is it that is required for you to dominate that which dominates you? What do you need to do to be able to dominate that which dominates you? What do you, is required of you to come out of it for the Lord to fight your battles, for God to contend with those who contend with you? Number one, give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Why do you need to give your life to Jesus Christ? It's because you need to place yourself under the redemptive power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, he gave his life for you. He died so that you can have authority over the clutches of the enemy. So that you can have authority over that which dominates your life. So that you can be able to dominate over that which dominates you. But you cannot do that under your fleshly power. You need the redemptive power of the Lord Jesus Christ. He shed the blood on the cross that you can be able to overcome, that you can be able to dominate. Redemption places you in a position whereby you will enjoy the power, the riches, the wisdom, the strength, the honor, the glory, and the blessings of God. That's what it does. It opens doors to all these things for you and me. It means that God himself deposits his divine endowment in you. When you receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, all the God of God, all the power of God comes into you. Because all this authority is in Christ. And you will succeed and begin to dominate over that which dominates you. Give yourself to Christ. Place yourself under the redemptive authority, redemptive authority and power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you will dominate. You will never begin to worry about the devil and his followers because Christ defeated him already. They can't defeat you anymore. They can't defeat you anymore because you are under the redemptive power and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, you become complete in him. You become complete. You become whom God wants you to be in full. Because you have received Christ, Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. The Bible reads, And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. When you give your life to Christ, 
He removes you from the power of the flesh and puts you under the control of the spirit and you begin to overcome in every area of your life. You begin to dominate that which dominates you. In verse 10, it says you are complete in him. In who? In Christ Jesus. And who is he? He is the one who is the head of all principalities and power. Meaning anything which can begin to control your answers to him. But if you yourself are complete in him, which means you are placed at the same level with Christ Jesus, and you begin to reign and control in your life. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. The Bible reads, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins? For some of us may be dominated by sin today, or maybe one sin or another will say, how can I come out of this problem? I'm a sinner, but the Christ died for you. He forgives your sins. All it takes is for you to repent and run to him and give your life to him, and then you will have redemption through his blood. Because by this, he has delivered us from the power of darkness, which means everything dominating you from the kingdom of darkness, from every area, be it sickness, be it witchcraft, be it bondages, all those things. God has already delivered you from them through Christ Jesus. And he has brought you to the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of light, where you begin to dominate over all those things which dominate over you. My prayer is that we hear this call today. And come unto him. What all this means is that all that is at Christ at your all that Christ has is at your disposal. All that Christ is is at your disposal. What he has and who he is, everything is at your disposal. For example, the power in his name is at your disposal. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. At the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, every knee bows, every tongue confesses that he is Lord. Because of that, this power and authority is at your disposal to be able to dominate. You will dominate in the mighty name of Jesus. The power in the blood. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. The blood of the Lamb protects you, it covers you, it washes you clean. It cleanses you from every form of sin. Every form of death, every form of darkness in you, it cleanses you from that. That's what the blood of Jesus does. It makes you right before God. And you overcome. All that power and authority is in your hands. The authority Christ has over principalities and powers, remember, he is the one who is the head of principality and power. But if he is the one who is the head, and he's you are complete in him, that power and authority is at your disposal. Colossians 1.16 says, For him, for by him were all things created. Colossians 1.16 to 17, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Nothing can exist without him. <laughs> Nothing can say a thing without him. Nothing can move without him. If he says no, <laughs> I pray 
that everything will work for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, I want you to know, for you to be able to dominate over those things which dominate you, is that you must be led by the Spirit of God. You must be led by the Spirit of God. When you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, then you overcome over the deeds of the flesh. If you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, you overcome over the deeds of the flesh. You overcome over every other thing in this earth and in the world. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. No condemnation for those in Christ Jesus who do not follow after the things of the flesh, but after the Spirit. When you allow the Spirit to take over and to be in control, you should know that <laughs> you will dominate those things which dominate you. You will dominate those things which dominate you. Romans 8, 13. He says, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit shift, if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall do what? You shall live. The Holy Spirit gives us power to overcome the flesh. He is there to teach us, to guide us, to direct us, and to show us the right path to take. He ensures that we are in the right standing with God the Father. Psalms 51 verse 10 to 12 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy spirit. With thy Holy Spirit. With thy free spirit. Romans 8. 14, 16. It says for as many as are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. It is the job of the Holy Spirit to help you to stand. He places you in the place of dominion where you dominate all those things which dominate you. So you need him in your life. Live a life led of the Spirit, and you will overcome in Jesus' name. You will dominate those things which dominate you. The third thing, this time, I'll quickly summarize it. You must have the knowledge of the Word of God. John 6, 63. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Have the knowledge of the word of God. For the word of God is the spirit, and it is life. It, is our, it has the ability to command, to create, to change a situation, to heal, to do that which it has been sent forth to do. Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than two, any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God has power and authority over everything that concerns your life. Speak the word in every situation, in every area of your life, if you want to have dominion over and you will dominate. You cannot dominate over anything without the authority and power in the word. The spoken word takes on the form of the spirit and life. Never speak negatively about your life and family. Speak positive things, things which will put you in a place of dominion, where you will dominate over those things which may want to dominate over you. Speak against the things which want to pull you down, and you'll find that you will dominate over those things which normally dominate over your life. Isaiah 55, verse 10 to 11, it says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, 
that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it to. See, the word of God, when it goes forth, it acts. It acts. It does that which has been sent over to do. Remember, in Psalm it says, Forever, O oh God, your word is settled in heaven. If it is settled in heaven, it is settled on this earth. If it is settled in heaven over your life, it is settled indeed for you. So you need the word of God for your life. You also need to build up your relationship with him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be what? Shall be added unto you. I want you to keep that in mind even as we close. I only have one prayer for you to say, Father, help me to overcome every area of my life that causes me to be dominated by other things. Begin to pray that prayer today. Pray and say, Father, help me to overcome every area of my life that causes me to be dominated by other things. Indeed, Father, help me to overcome. Help me, O oh Lord. Let me overcome every area. Help me to change every area of my life that causes me to be dominated over. That I may dominate over those things which dominate over me. I thank you, King of glory. I give you praise. Blessed be thy holy name, O King of kings. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I pray that the word has spoken into your life. And it will change your situation. It will change your lifestyle. That you can always be dominating those things which have been dominating over your life. At this point in time, I just want to ask you to prepare an offering on the screen. They will give you the details from which you can send in your offerings. And uh, follow the instructions shown on the screen. And the Lord will bless you as we give. Let's pray over our offering. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We thank you for this opportunity to give unto thee, O Lord. Even as we give unto your kingdom, O Lord, help us dominate over the situation that will dominate over us. Help us dominate over poverty. Help us dominate over sickness. Bless us mightily. Bless our business. Grow our businesses, O Lord, Father. We thank you, King of glory. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage you to join us every Sunday here at Lighthouse Arena for church service. Our service starts by 9.30, and you are encouraged to join us. You can either join us on site and online, though we would love to have you here with us on site. And the Lord will bless you indeed mightily. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Praise the Lord.